this AEW TV deal, man. Um, everybody's talked about it already. It's only a day or two old, but I'm sure everybody's given their hot takes. Alfred Conan, well, what is your take on this deal? Um, just in general, are you, you know, there's the argument, oh, AEW is not profitable. Do you think they're profitable? Um, you know, you notice Rampage not isn't a part of the deal. What do you make of that? Just give me like your sort of breakdown and overall sentiments on the deal itself. I sure hope they're profitable. It's a great deal from the outset. I don't know what they're spending. I don't know all the details of that. I'm sure all that's going to come out in due time. I'm glad for the wrestling business that AEW is getting, whether it's 150, 185 million, uh, whatever their average money they're getting, I'm glad that they're re up this TV deal. It's something I've seen coming for a while. It took a very long time for them to announce. And now that they've done it, it, it it's good to see. It is um, good to see in terms of money being in the wrestling business. This is great news for pro wrestling top stars. Great news for Rhea Ripley. Like, I'm not sure the contract details of her. I don't know if she's re signed, but. I do think that she's on her way to free agency negotiation. Rhea Ripley is about wow. to be a billionaire. With this yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a lot of WWE top stars whose contracts are now coming up are about to be the beneficiaries of some bidding wars. Yeah. I will say it's so funny that people are looking at this TV deal and it corresponds thinking that it corresponds to some type of viewership or how much better the content will be. With AEW, and this is what the Khan family is great at, and this is going to sound like a diss, and it kind of is. It's like a backhanded compliment. The Khan family is so good at existing in mediocrity. The Khan family, their calling card is excellence in mediocrity. Mm -hmm. They're really good at existing, just existing, and having longevity in mediocrity. Like AEW is the Jacksonville Jaguars, is full of <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the Jaguars are in the NFL. They're making money. You look at the talent that the Jaguars have and you would think that, oh my God, like they're going to win a Super Bowl. I love the NFL. I, look, between you and me, there's going to be a pro football bits offshoot in the very near Woo! future. Football. I love the NFL and I look at the Jacksonville Jaguars as somebody who's a 15-time fantasy football champion and I say, that is a Super Bowl roster. Like right. last year, it looked like the Jaguars... They, at one point, were the hottest team in the NFL, but it just fell apart, and now they're 0-4, despite oh, having a quarterback who everybody told me was the next John Elway, and Travis yeah. Etienne, who is as explosive of a player there's ever been. Christian Kirk is a great player. They have a Super Bowl-winning coach, yet they're 0-4, and they're mediocre. You know, but they're existing. Fulham FC, they're in the Premier League. They got relegated. They won in the EFL in the Secondary League, so they came back. But again, nobody's expecting them to win the Premier League title. They're just there. And AEW is a pro wrestling version of that, in that you've got this great roster of wrestlers, and you've got everything right there. You've got the money. You've got the talent. But there's no storylines. The ratings are going down, the attendance is going down, and they're just existing in mediocrity. And that's my fear with AEW moving forward, is that despite all this money, they're going to exist in mediocrity. It's funny, and I'll you know, throw it back to you after this. I watched The Joker last night at the premiere, and I'm a huge, it's the same dynamic I have with AEW. I love wrestling. I watch AEW every week, uh, you know, but it, it sucks, okay? Because the five-year yeah. anniversary sucks. I watched Joker, so excited. And I was expecting something, and what I got was this musical that was disjointed. There was no story. There was a lot of big stars. Joaquin mm -hmm. Phoenix is a star. Um, you know, Lady Gaga is a star. Yep. And everything was right there for this great movie. I saw Joker 1. It was an amazing movie. But Joker 2 sucked, despite all the ingredients for a great movie. Yeah. And it's the same dynamic with AEW, seemed to the point where WBD owns DC, and WBD is also part of the AEW universe, yep. where... AEW has all this talent and the show sucks. So it's the same dynamic where it's funny because Marvel was in bed with Netflix for a while where they're producing a lot of Marvel shows like Luke Cage on Netflix and WBD is yep. in bed with DC. So they're producing a lot of DC shows and DC, anybody would argue, sucks. Like I don't want DC to go out of business, but DC's content is not good. They fumbled Batman versus Superman. Absolutely. You know, they fumbled Black Adam and The Rock and AEW is fumbling all this great talent over in Jacksonville. Well, you brought up a great point. It's the same one I made on the live show. It's the same one I made on my podcast yesterday. It's the same one I'll make here that you just made. Just because there's a TV deal doesn't mean the creative's going to get all of a sudden better. And that's pr the proof is in the pudding. The numbers come out. You like to put out the fast nationals. People get mad at you about that. 
Um, <laughs> so the ratings for Dynamite came out, and they were uh, six. What were they, my friend? I know you know better than me. They were not good. Six eighty down. Yes, not NXT good. was eight ninety five, um, which is amazing. But especially against the debate yeah, that what did, do like, you? Six million people. I mean, you're right, is what I'm getting at here, okay? Like, you are absolutely right. Just because they get this deal, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden the create the creative's going to get better or all of you people are going to, like, all the sickos in the IWC are going to turn out and just start watching the show all of a sudden. Where have you been, you know? Um, I said it from the beginning. You know, if a million people were going to watch Ring of Honor, they would just watch, they would have watched Ring of Honor, you know? So we're at that point with AEW where it's like, if a million of you were going to watch it or two million, it would have happened now. It's not uh, so, especially in 2024. So luckily they're going to streaming because it takes, well, let me ask you that. So part of this deal is they're going to streaming. Do you think that removes the element of like, oh, we're debating key demos and what the ratings are for these shows? Like, do you think that will remove that whole talking point or discussion area of discussion if you will i don't think it will because wrestling fans are creatures of habit and mm -hmm. ratings day is what it is so there's always gonna as long as there's an 18 to 49 number it will be debated it will be twist and turn to fit people's narratives and hopefully nielsen is able to evolve the way that they review the ratings so that streaming is included you know net Netflix is going to host WWE, so they're probably going to have to from that regard. I'm sure I'll be hearing from the insiders in WWE about what the those numbers are. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing with AEW on Max. And it's funny we talk about streaming. One thing that really does concern me about AEW's deal is they're doing business with the CNN Plus guy. That's what you have to realize. <laughs> David Zasloff is one of the most hated men in and out of media. He's the guy who ran off the NBA from WBD after over three decades, all I've known my entire life is the NBA on TNT, and it's gone now. Yeah, David Zaslav launched what is unequivocally the biggest failure of a streaming company in the history of streaming. From longevity, it's CNN Plus, you know, from the money they lost. And so the fact that the CNN Plus guy thinks it's a good business decision and invests all that money in AEW, to me, it kind of scares me because AEW, what they need is they need more of an investment in whether it's writing, whether it's creative, whether it's Tony Khan stepping down, bringing in the right people to book the product. But the CNN Plus guy is the one who's investing his money in this. And that does not bode well. With yeah. AEW, the changes they make that would make me think that, yes, this is a game changer, which has been a bastardized term. If they brought in Paul Heyman, if they brought in a Nick Khan, if they yeah. brought in somebody who behind the scenes can turn AEW around and help draw, if they brought in somebody who's a live event czar, who knew how to promote AEW to a live audience, to do cool things, to get people out to the shows, but yeah. to bring in, I love Bobby Lashley. You know, I don't have to say this. I've got the blackest yeah. YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm the king of black wrestling media. I love Bobby Lashley, but bringing in the Hurt Business, I don't think is going to turn around AEW because it's just going to be something else that's fumbled. If you fumble Jade Cargill, I don't have faith you're going to be able to book this black stable and be able to know what makes them work. I agree fully with that as well. Um, so uh, you had talked about, you know, bringing people in and, you know, the CNN guy, etc. Well, it was revealed through this deal that WBD, in fact, does own a stake. Some They own something, some chunk of AEW. I had predicted that for a long ass time. That's the only reason they were allowing AEW to play around and wait for them this long to announce a deal. In my opinion, I'm like, they own a bit of it and they're just taking a bit off the top from everything. You know, that's at least my opinion. I don't know, but it's been revealed. I guess they own a chunk. What do you make of that? Where did you always think that, or is that news to you or yeah. How do you feel about that? No, it's not news to me. I'd always heard the same thing. And I, to this day, I don't know how much of that chunk WBD owns. Yeah. It does speak to the profitability. Like, I don't know if that helps AEW being profitable, how much they have to give in terms of WBD's stake, because that mm -hmm. ownership is something else. Like, the more money they make, the more that goes to WBD, because it's a percentage. Yeah. And from a standpoint, it's like, I think it's a good thing. I don't know how much WBD owns. Depending on how much they own, I think it's a good thing that this network has a vested interest in AEW because WBD owning AEW 
doesn't make it as expendable. It means that they do have incentive for AEW to get better. At the same time, it is another cost in addition to the payments they're going to have to make to the talent and the production costs, which are vast for weekly live television, the extra two hours they're going to have. But that is another cost that you're going to have to kind of look at. I know it's equity, but it's another cost that Tony Khan and AEW are going to have to shell out. So it's not easy to just say, oh, yeah, they're profitable. How profitable are they? What does this stake mean? It's good from a standpoint of WBD having a vested interest, but it'll be interesting to see how much of that vested interest it is. Give us okay. So you have you have WWE sources, right? Who who give you okay, and you do or did the same with AEW? Like I know you've explained it on the show before, but can you give a TLDR sort of you know where it broke down or or what the relationship is like? Or and did you have sources in AEW? Yeah, everybody talks to Big Alfred. I know you know I know a lot of people (laughs) that work to this wrestling media and they think that these wrestlers take sides and stuff like that. Uh, My DMs are wide open and I hear from everybody. That's all I'm going to say in terms of who I hear for, but. I hear things. People talk to me. And it's so funny that people call me a journalist. Like, thanks. I appreciate that. I guess the wrestling media is so weak that they had to come for me. And, and, you know, I write for Forbes. Yes. But Forbes came looking for me. And I'm a columnist. And I get paid for my opinion. And, yes, there's things that I report because people come to me with information. And if I decide that I want to make that part of my narrative, okay. But people reach out to me and tell me things. And there's a, the majority of what I hear from people are not things I'm going to run with because I'm in a carny business where people are reporting things to help their narrative. And you just, sometimes it's a work. Sometimes it's not, you see poor Dave Meltzer gets worked every other day. <laughs> <trying to laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so like these, there's no such thing as a journalist in wrestling. They're all just fans who get information and, and maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. Like I happen to work for a very prestigious organization of Forbes and I went out of my way to build my own um, organization in pro wrestling bits. Uh, and as a result, because of the audience I've built, I get information from people. It's yeah. funny. When you want to talk about the relationship I have with AEW, I'll tell That's you where it broke down in that Fleischman Herald. Shout out to Fleischman Herald. That's AEW's PR company. I don't know if they still are. People forget that early on in AEW, like, we were very friendly. And to this day, I support AEW. Like, you can say that I want AEW to go out of business all you want, but my actions of me watching AEW every week and covering AEW, regardless of what I say about them, support the narrative that, yes, I do, do have a vested interest in AEW. Uh, but I would cover them all the time during the Wednesday Night Wars. I was writing articles about, wow, AEW destroys NXT again. In that petty commercial that AEW aired they quoted on the- you. One of the articles was from Alfred Kunwa saying AEW trounces NXT. So when it was convenient for them, they loved me. When I was talking about AEW is winning the wrestling wars, look at this little wrestling company that could. They gave me Chris Jericho, I interviewed him. They gave me Tony Khan, I interviewed him. Kenny Omega, I interviewed him. Darby Allin, you name the star. I interviewed them, I put them on. Uh, I had access to the library. And then I wrote an article about how, wow, there's not a lot of black people on top because that's just what I do. It's one of the narratives I have. It'll never change about me. I'm the king of black wrestling media. So when I see that, wow, uh, it looks like (laughs) AEW is very quiet at the main event. It looks like they're not really capturing a black voice. You know, I don't necessarily, I'm begging for, oh, you got to make so-and-so a black champion or whatnot, because that's not going to just make your company blacker. It just, can we get a spectrum of blackness? Can we get some black storytelling or whatever? I, yeah. I wrote an article like that, and it all became, oh, Alfred hates AEW, this, that, and the third. So yeah. now they don't give, like, I don't interview AEW talent as much, which is good. I've never asked for an interview. I'm usually approached with interviews because between you and me, it just takes up a lot of my time. But if somebody wants to reach out and do an interview and they have something to promote and they want to talk to me, okay. But yeah. they don't interview me as much. I don't get access to their little library of pictures that I can find on Google. So it's one more step I have to take. But that's where the relationship, I guess, would have break, broken down. Like uh, Tony Khan still DM me, me every blue moon or whatnot. And uh, there, but in terms of. Is he like the, mad at you? Oh, is he like, oh, why are you? Stop saying these things. <laughs> From time to right? time, they're, they're not pleasant. But he, right. Tony Khan is a pleasant man. I mean, he doesn't. Yeah. He, it's funny because I was watching that Vince McMahon documentary and Tony Atlas, who was the star of that documentary, yeah. talked about how, like, if you're in the wrestling business and you're an authority figure and you're nice, 
people will take advantage of you. And that's the Tony Khan story. That's basically, if there was a Tony Khan documentary, it would be not one episode. It would be one sentence from Tony Atlas, and that's a sentence. A nice guy <laughs> who people take advantage of. But God love him, to his credit, made hundreds of millions of dollars for AEW. Did the same thing he did with Film FC, same thing he did with the Jaguars who've never been to a Super Bowl. Like, it's not, they're not going to be number one. They're not going to be this great, like, all-time wrestling company, but they're going to make money, and they have a roster, and they have the talent, and hopefully they're able to turn around. Like you said, people get mad at you. They go, oh, at this is nasty, by the way, on X. Uh, Alfred Konoa, you're just a hater, uh, all of that. And you put out the Fast Nationals, right? And so you were putting out the Fast Nationals when you were friendly with them. And am I correct on that? And you've been doing it since it hasn't been nice. And now, yes. now you're all of a sudden anti them. But when you were posting the ratings, when you were cool with them and it was looking favorably for them, no one was calling you out and trying to say you're shilling and all of that sort of stuff. Am I correct in that assessment? Yeah, yeah. And I really don't, I mean, I'm aware of it and I, I'm aware of it enough to lean into it, yeah. but I post the, the, it's information that's very valuable. If you want to look at the fast nationals, you're going to be able to 95% of the times tell what the actual final rating is. So if I put out the fast nationals, it's a little lower than what the rating is going to be. And sometimes if it's on maybe an all-star weekend, if it's on a day where there's live sports, sometimes I put out fast nationals for AEW that are higher than what the number should be. And people don't yeah. talk about that either, where the actual number is a little low, but it's usually within 7%. Okay. So you could look at the fast nationals with no dog in the fight and be like, Oh, so AEW must have done that. If you want to be a Dave Meltzer and put Just for Men in your hair and start crying, and <laughs> so much that the Just for Men starts sweating out of your hair, and you want to cry about, oh, he's putting out these fake fraudulent numbers and whatnot, you can do that. And you can look at the negative part of that. Go ahead and do that because, yes, like there is an element to where there are forces that are allowing these fast nationals to get out to where it will create a bad narrative for AEW. But you could also go into it there and be like, oh, so this is what AEW did. And yeah. to not put out fast nationals, to hide what AEW did in the ratings before the final numbers come out, that is just as unethical as putting them out. Like you're protecting AEW so that there's not a bad narrative about them. That is the same thing as putting out fast nationals. So I really don't pay attention to what's ethical, what's not. If I get information that I think will tell me the story early, the people who follow me, it's like, They'll see the Fast Nationals, and then the real number will come out. It's like, yeah, we know. We know that it, they did about that. We saw the yeah, Fast yeah. Nationals. It's like, we, we know. And so you're, yeah. you're going to be more informed. So, but TK was cool. Just to clarify for the folks listening, TK was cool when you were putting out ratings that were favorable for them. I don't know if and TK like, was cool. So the IWC, were they attacking you when the ratings were favorable for them? No. Like, I, you know, okay. I, I, I would be the wrong person to ask about what people say. Like, I really don't read the comments. Oh, yeah. There are great things said about me as much as they are. Um, I will say that there's a lot of times that the Fast Nationals will come out higher in their inflated numbers, and then the final numbers come back like lower, and there's no attacking and stuff like that. But okay, that's what, yeah. once the narrative was created, and this is more so a Dave Meltzer thing that the, the narrative was created that like, oh, these numbers only come out when it's bad for AEW, which is not all the way false. Sometimes they're good for AEW, sometimes they're bad for AEW. But once yeah. that narrative got into people's head that oh, these Fast Nationals only come out when AEW does poorly, then anytime they come out, it's like oh, how dare him? And okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 